Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. We have here a video from an agitated applicant for the JRF Million Dollar Prize, a Mr. Greg Price, somewhere in Minnesota. Apparently, he believes that he's been slighted, and in the video, he attempts to show us his marvelous power to douse. He complains mightily that he's been trying to get tested for the prize for more than two years, but he fails to mention that we were unable to read his application and his claim, and we had to exchange a lot of correspondence with him in order to get that clarified. Finally, we received a brief 25-word note from the required academic source validating that the applicant was able to perform as described. I read from that affidavit. Mr. Greg Price demonstrated his dousing ability to my satisfaction with brass dousing rods in the downtown library at Duluth, Minnesota, around 10.30 a.m., Saturday, the 22nd of December, 2007. Dr. Robert E. Paulus, Professor Emeritus from the University of Minnesota, Duluth, was the author of this document, which tells us nothing at all about what Mr. Price was able to do to convince the professor of his dousing ability. Now, normally we would require a little more evidence than this but we're willing to waive such details in order to save Mr. Price from an attack of the vapors. I only hope that his demonstration for F Professor Paulus was better than what he shows on his video. Let's take a look at part of that video. I will wa walk to this circle that I drew. I walked around the circle. Now I will mark that path with these rods. I attached these line levels so that anybody saying that I tipped them, I can prove them wrong. And you can clearly see the rods hit me and bounce. I don't, and I'm holding a tube now, and I don't twist my hand, so you explain how if I'm keeping it level and doing this, they can, that this can be true. Here, we've got them level. I didn't do that. Now I'll come from this direction clearly see, I do not do that. I'm not moving my hands. The levels are level. I've got these goggles painted with oil-based paint. I can't possibly see through these. Okay, I'm in front of the circle. I can't tell you that it's perfectly level, but it's going to be pretty good right there, I believe. And I'm going to walk to the circle. And clearly, I'm not moving my hands. And clearly, they are moving and crossing. So I have proven my point in two different ways. And I'm looking for the parties all aforementioned to get this together, and I want my chance. Otherwise, James Randi, admit you're a fraud, that your offer is a fraud, and disband your organization. Thank you. You must understand that dowsers always work with systems that are out of equilibrium. They use a forked stick which is tensed in their hands so that the slightest twitch or sloping of the hand or fingers will cause the rod to jump up and down violently. Or they use what Mr. Price has chosen, two bent pieces of coat hanger wire or welding rods. Held as you have seen, attempting to keep them from moving left or right is very difficult. Unbalanced systems like this are very sensitive to the slightest inclination of the fingers, the hands, or, as in Mr. Price's case, lifting of the arms. Let's view that video again, and you'll see that he lifts his forearms, and the rod rotates in the direction he wishes. Clearly see, I do not do that. Knowing the nature of the idiomotor reaction, of which this is a perfect example, I'm sure that Mr. Price is quite unaware of how he makes the rods move. In fact, we've already told him about this, and he just can't see it. However, all that is moot. I refer to part of Mr. Price's description of his abilities. I would first walk the area before and check for pipes, wires, water, etc. that could complicate the demonstration. Well, that's interesting. 
it really says quite clearly that Mr. Greg Price can detect pipes and wires. I simply suggest, therefore, that we lay out a set of pipes and or wires concealed under a blanket and have him locate them using his dowsing rods. The demonstration he gave us on the video is amateurish indeed. He steps one pace back from the circle, blindfolded, and then shows us that his wires will cross when he walks forward one pace. In any case, a video proves nothing. We require an actual test. So we suggest this to Mr. Price, that the test we propose will be much more definitive, a word that dowsers don't like to hear, and simpler so that the answer may be arrived at easily. I must tell you also that presently Mr. Price's application has been closed because he's threatened legal action against the JREF. Far from being intimidated, we welcome his legal action. He knows our address, the process servers know us well, and can get here even without the use of dowsing rods, incredible though that may seem to Mr. Price. And we're all ready to go. Mr. Price? Mr. Price? You out there somewhere? Oh, I see you're chatting with a few of the others who are also threatening to sue us. I wouldn't want to interrupt. In your video, by the way, you call me a fraud. Well, we'll see who the fraud is, won't me, Mr. Price. I'm James Randi, and I thank you for this few minutes of your time. We thank you for watching this latest episode of James Randi Speaks. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randi.org.